and welcome to our personal development um, course. So we're going to spend the next 10 days or so just looking at some things that may be holding you back or things that might be affecting your ability to move forward in life and in business. And we're going to address, first of all, something that I'm going to dub um, your mean girl. And those are the voices in your head that maybe tell you that you can't try something new or that you're not going to be successful at something and just things that hold you back. And they say 80% of the chatter in our head is actually negative. Can you imagine actually saying out loud to one of your closest friends some of the things that you say to yourself throughout the day? Uh, where you berate yourself for not doing something fast enough, good enough, perfect enough. Now, these voices may have started out from an outside source and then we internalize them and own them as our own. You'll notice in the definition earlier what I defined Mean Girl as, and it can be many things. So I'll just give you an example from my life. Okay, so when I was in grade two, I went to a small country school and it wasn't uncommon to have what we called split classes, which means there wasn't enough kids of one grade to fill a classroom. So I was in grade two, but I was in a split class that was mainly grade three students. So I think there was about maybe 10 of us, maybe even less, that were actually in grade two, and the rest of the class was made up of grade three students. So we mainly had grade three, grade three curriculum. And so as a seven-year-old, <laughs> I was pretty much um, surrounded by eight-year-olds, which seem really old when you're only seven. Um, my teacher controlled the classroom with um, what I would call sarcasm and ridicule. If you've ever had kind of an old school teacher and that was sort of how they used to control the class. We were working on an independent assignment where we were writing a story. Um, I, the teacher was coming down the, down the aisles, looking over the student stories, and she stops at my desk. She points to a word on the page that I had written, and she says, what's that? And I said, girl. I had spelt it G-U-R-L. And she's like, girl? That's not how you spell girl. And then she goes up to the board and writes how I wrote girl on the board and laughed. And of course, all the class took their cue and they laughed. And so, um, so I immediately obviously knew I'd spelt it wrong and erased it. And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> I'm seven. And so I write G-E-R-L. She comes back, looks over my shoulder and she's like, girl? And so she then proceeds to go up on the board, write how I wrote girl. Now the class is now, this is a game. And so they all laugh. And by that time, it's almost recess. So she says, you can, to me, she goes, you can just stay in your desk until you can figure out how to spell. And so I stayed behind, obviously not knowing how to spell. So I thought, well, okay, I know it's a vowel. So A-E-I-O-U. Uh, eventually, I'm going to get this right. And um, so while everyone left for recess, I wrote G-A-R-L, going, I'm just going to go through the alphabet until I can figure out what this letter is, because apparently I don't know. Comes back, everyone comes back, I'm still sitting at my desk, my teacher comes up to me, looks at this, burst out hysterically, mocking me. Of course, I feel an inch tall, and she's like, you can't spell, can you? And so, anyway, from age seven on, I have always thought I can't spell. Now, I will admit, I'm challenged with spelling. I have no idea why if I miss something genetically, but my grade two teacher in no way helped with that insecurity that I had. And so all through school for the rest of my um, academic career, whenever there was creative writing or anything like that, I would, although I knew other words to use, I would specifically choose words that I knew I knew how to spell and actually form my sentences around that because I didn't want to try spelling a word I'd never spelt before because I could potentially get it wrong. Yes, this is long before spell check. So 
that's just a really simple example from my childhood where someone imprinted something in my brain that maybe wasn't kind or wasn't true, but that phrase, you can't spell, can you, has definitely followed me through my entire academic career. And so that would be something that would then affect you. Now, it's a small thing, and I realize that there's a lot larger things that can hold us back than simply the ability to spell a word. But that's just a really great example how sometimes we can have something that we carry with us through life that's not necessarily our fault and it's not necessarily true. So throughout these next 10 days together, we're going to try and dispel some of the lies that we might believe that are holding us back about ourselves. So I'm going to put some resources down below. And the one thing that I would love for you to have is like just a journal or something that you can write in because we're going to do just some um, just some journaling and just some introspective on areas in our life where we can potentially grow and learn and just become better people together. So I'm excited about these next 10 days and I'm excited about what we're going to learn. I'm excited to share some resources with you. Um, you can comment below on maybe some of your stories, um, but if you do want to share with me privately, you can as well. Okay, have a great day.